Today, Ford released the details of one of the most hotly anticipated off-road vehicles in quite some time, the new 2022 Ford Bronco Raptor. Yes, this will be a 2022 model year vehicle, which means you will be able to buy it this calendar year. Supposedly summer of this year, they will actually start deliveries and you'll be able to order one starting around March. Now. There are a few things that we don't know. For instance, we don't know exactly how much power the Bronco Raptor is going to get, and we don't know how much it's going to cost. Today, Ford released a treasure trove of images and a ton of information, so let's roll through what we know and what we don't know. The first thing you'll notice when you look through these pictures is that this looks kind of like a regular Bronco. But if you look a little closer, you'll notice these massive, massive fender flares on the side. That's because this is nearly 10 inches wider than a regular Bronco, 9.8 inches to be exact. That's thanks to an 8.6 inch increase in track that pushes the wheels further out, improves stability at higher speeds, and of course, at lower speeds as well. This is going to be one wide Bronco. To support the wider track and the more aggressive off-road ambitions of the new Raptor, they've made some modifications to the frame. Now, the bulk of the frame remains the same. You'll notice in the picture on your screen, the gray components are the existing frame. Blue components are where Ford has strengthened things, so all of the mounting points for the suspension components, the rear axle, the front independent suspension, those are all consistent. I know that some folks out there were really hoping that Ford would give the Bronco Raptor a solid front axle, but that doesn't really make sense with the mission of the Bronco because the independent front suspension has a few advantages. And they've definitely strengthened a whole lot of things around the vehicle. We have a lot more suspension travel, 13 inches of front wheel travel, which is massive, 14 inches of rear suspension travel. In the front, that's a 60% improvement. That is truly massive over the regular Bronco. And in the back, it's a 40% improvement. According to Ford, this should tow 4,500 pounds thanks to the new engine under the hood. It's a twin turbo V6 engine that's a little bit more closely related to what we find under the hood of the Ford Explorer than the F-150 Raptor, although obviously they've tweaked it specifically for this vehicle. And that's why we don't know its final horsepower output. All Ford has said is it's gonna be over 400 horsepower. The twin turbo engine makes a lot of sense because they're going to be able to pack a lot of power and a lot of torque into a relatively small engine compartment. And you're going to need a lot of torque because the standard tires on this model are going to be 37 inch all-terrain tires. If you plan on Baja racing, rock climbing, because they are calling this a dual purpose off-road vehicle suitable for those high speed sand situations as well as rock climbing, or logically mud bogging if you were to replace these tires with mud boggers, this should be an absolutely excellent combination. For those interested in rock crawling, it appears that the skid plates have been reinforced and the body has also been reinforced, which is interesting because this is, of course, a body on frame vehicle, but the body does add rigidity to the entire vehicle. So they say that they have increased total body and prime torsional rigidity by 50% over the regular model. That should help in some of those off camber situations or, or really tricky off-roading situations. The solid rear axle is a semi-float Dana 50, by the way. And they're bookended by larger drive shafts, both front and rear, for improved durability as well. Ground clearance comes in at 13.1 inches. That is 4.8 inches more than the base four-door model. And this is going to be available only in four-door trim. That's pretty logical because it gives the vehicle some added stability in high-speed maneuvers. If they were to apply the same treatment to a two-door Bronco and you were to drive it at 100 miles an hour on a sand dune, you would notice it would be less stable. So that's why they have chosen to go in this direction. They also have an upgraded transfer case that features a 3.06 to 1 low mode uh, for a 67.7 to 1 crawl ratio. Obviously, if you want a super aggressive crawl ratio, you need to find something else, but that is more than enough with the kind of power and torque that this vehicle should have on tap. If you're wondering about the tires, those are going to be BF Goodwrench KO2 tires. They're a 37 by 12.5 R17 LT. So 17 inch wheels, they are beadlock capable, although the bead lockers are not going to come on the vehicle right from the factory. The same drive mode selector that we see in other Bronco models is still there, but it has some new modes. There's a Baja mode, which activates a turbo anti-lag calibration to help you out of some of those sand dunes there. And again, 4,500 pounds of towing ability. I have to say with the doors off the vehicle and some of the photos that Ford is showing, there's dust everywhere inside. I'm curious to know how well some of those shifter knobs hold up to that kind of dust intrusion over time. It's worth noting that a lot of the buttons that we see in the Bronco have rubber covers over them, basically the ones on the steering wheel, some on the dash, etc., And that will really help with that particular problem. But I don't know about some of those rotary selector knobs. As you'd expect, interior and exterior styling get a few tweaks over the rest of the Bronco lineup to help separate it. 
in addition to those massive fender flares that we find outside. Rolling through the spec sheet here that they handed out, I'm interested to see the base Raptor model because it's going to get marine grade vinyl seats. There are also orange splashes here and there according to this. Push button ignition, uh, switch lights up in code orange they say. You can also up for upgraded features like the Neo suede interior, vinyl wrapped instrument panel, topper, uh, there's a Ford performance design seat unique to the Bronco Raptor, and the Bronco Raptor comes standard with a high package that includes Sync 4 with a 12 inch touchscreen with swipe capability. There's also a Lux, pa Lux package available, if I can spit that out, that has a lot of luxury features like adaptive cruise control, the 10 speaker audio system as well, and it looks like there's going to be a 12 inch LCD instrument cluster as well. I'm not sure when, but hopefully I'll be able to get my hands on the new Bronco Raptor at some point this year. I'm really intrigued to drive it, because up till now we've had high performance off-road sand dune oriented pickup trucks from a bunch of different companies out there. Obviously Ford there, Ram and Chevy has their own take on that kind of truck, although it's not quite the same as a Raptor or a TRX. But this is going to be the first SUV designed for that sort of thing. Now, you can probably bet that it won't take too long before Jeep comes up with some sort of answer, but at the moment, this is going to stand alone. And I think the Bronco really has the style to go with it. I love the look. The Bronco has a very modern, very aggressive, very sturdy look to it that really is unparalleled right now in the SUV world. In my opinion, as far as the look goes, only the Land Rover Defender is quite as interesting to me. Now, the last picture I'm showing you here is a picture of a Bronco Raptor right next to a Wild Track model, it looks like here. And you can really see the height difference in these two vehicles and the width difference. The Bronco Raptor is going to be so wide it needs clearance lights in front, so they've integrated those above the Ford logo. It also says Ford up front rather than Bronco, so that is definitely a big change. The headlights are very similar. Obviously, as you can see, the most of the body is very, very similar as well. The side view mirrors, slight tweak there with the integrated turn signal elements there. But you can see the massive difference lower in the suspension, the way this sits on the road, those massive underbody plates as well that have been redone just for the Bronco Raptor. So this really has quite a unique look. Even though it is obviously closely related to the rest of the Bronco lineup, a lot of components are shared, there is a substantial change with the Bronco Raptor. So it really is going to have an interesting presence when you see one in the parking lot. Be sure and let me know what you think about all that down there in the comment section below. And of course, stay tuned because hopefully I will be able to get my hands on one very, very soon. In the meantime, find me over at facebook.com slash alexnatos, Instagram, all those other social places. And of course, check out the merch store at awaymerch.com. I'll see all of you later.